I really don't like my photos. There's just something about the photo that I can't quite put my finger on, but I just don't like it. It's not good enough. I hate the way everything looks in the picture, like everything. All my photos are looking the same. So at some point, every food photographer has uttered those words. Are you nodding your head? Because I can see you, you're nodding your head. I know you've done it. I know I've done it. So in today's video, I'm not gonna tell you, hey, it's a mindset block. You need to just get over it. But what I am gonna tell you are actionable tips on what to do when you don't like your food photos. Hey there, welcome back. If you're a food blogger or a food photographer, you are in the perfect spot because on this channel, I'm gonna teach you how to take amazing photos of food and how to make money with those photos. So today's video is a little bit juicy. Let's dive straight into the tips on what to do when you don't love the photos you take. Now, the first tip I have for you is to stop listening to every single person on the planet when it comes to your food photography. And don't really ask anyone else what they think of your photos. A lot of the feelings of imposter syndrome and thinking that your work is not good enough and you hating your photo comes from other people's opinions of what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing with your food photos. And that also goes for the advice that I give you on this channel. Now, my job as an educator is to actually lay out the options for you, but your job as a food photographer is to decide which bits of information you're going to take in and implement. My job is not to teach you my style, but to actually teach you how to develop your own style. So take everyone's advice with a pinch of salt. Food photography is very subjective and literally every single person is going to have a different opinion. So as an example, if I showed this one photo to 10 different photographers and asked them to pinpoint one thing they don't like about the photo, I can guarantee you I'm going to have 10 different answers. In fact, I conducted a little experiment with the students inside my paid program, Food Photography Bootcamp. So in our private group, I showed this photo to my students and then I asked them to name one thing that they didn't like about this image. And to make sure that other people's opinions were not affected, I asked them to DM me on Instagram what they didn't like. And here are the results I got. All of these. So some people didn't like the editing, some people didn't like the composition, some people didn't like the lighting, some thought the food styling didn't look good. But you know what? When I originally took this image for a local food magazine, I loved the photo. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Until this day, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with the photo. Does that mean that all of these opinions here don't count? Absolutely not. But when it comes to your food photography, it's your own opinion that counts and nobody else's. Sure, if you have a mentor or a coach or you're interning somewhere, it's always good to ask for one person's opinion. But what anyone else thinks should not make you doubt your own skills and creativity as a food photographer. You're allowed to take in people's opinions, but you need to judge your images for yourself. And that's something that comes with time and experience. Had I done this little experiment earlier on in my career, I would straight away be judging my photos. I'd be worried that things were wrong with it, that my client wouldn't like it. I'd be worried about everybody else's opinion. I'd have feelings of imposter syndrome and my confidence would definitely take a blow. But with time, I've gained confidence in my ability and I have the work and clients to back that up. Okay, so on to tip number two when you're hating your food photos, and that is to take a break. That's right, take some space, take some time away from food photography. The problem is that when we're in the thick of it, we're in the middle of a photo shoot, or maybe just after a photo shoot, or perhaps it's a very busy season of life where we're doing a lot of food photography shoots, and we feel creatively drained, it can be really difficult to assess whether we truly don't love the photo we've taken, or is it that we actually need a mental break and come back to it with a set of new eyes. It's really hard to pinpoint exactly what you don't like about your photo and what you need to improve on when you're feeling burnt out and physically and mentally exhausted. When you have negative feelings such as overwhelm and frustration, it's so hard to find anything positive about that photo in that particular time. Instead, you're just going to end up trying to pinpoint problems that actually don't even exist. Take me for an example. Whenever I have a shoot for a client and it's been a really long day, we've gone over time or the shot list is particularly long, 
I always find that towards the end of the day, generally after 4 p.m., I don't like any of the photos I've taken. I'll be scrolling back at my photos whilst at the shoot and think, oh my gosh, these photos are awful. There's something wrong with every single one of them. The lighting's flat, client's never gonna rehire me again, and they're gonna be so disappointed when I send them the final versions. And this is despite the fact that the client has approved every single photo at the shoot and they're loving the light and everything else. But with time, I realized, hey, this is happening at every shoot and that I just need to give myself space and time. So the very next day, when I go to view those same photos again with a refreshed pair of eyes or maybe a couple of days after, I suddenly changed my mind and now my viewpoint is very different. So all those photos that I was hating past 4 p.m., they suddenly look great to me now. So whenever you feel like you don't like a particular photo or photos from a shoot, take a break. Cut back to it in a couple of days and reassess. And I can guarantee you nine out of 10 times, you will find no problem with the photos. And just an extra tip here, never edit the photos on the same day as you take them for the very same reason. Okay, so now that you've given yourself some space, you've cleared your head, you've taken other people's opinions out of the picture, it's now time for tip number three, which is to pinpoint what you don't like about that photo. Now, whenever you're not happy with the end results, I want you to look at one specific photo, not like a set of 100 photos, but just one photo, and make a list of what you don't like. Now, it doesn't have to be a super long list. It could just be one thing you don't like. So this is not to encourage you to write that long list of things, but more to encourage you to be very specific about what you don't like in the photo. And before you come back to me and say, well, I'm not sure what I don't like, I just don't like the photo, here are six main components that you can think about when you assess whether or not you like a photo. So number one, I want you to look at the lighting. When looking at the lighting, assess the style of lighting, focus on the shadows, focus on the exposure. Number two, I want you to look at the food styling. Are all the ingredients showing? Have you styled the food not just on the plate, but as well as the ingredients that you use around the plate? After food styling, number three, I want you to look at the colors that you've used in the photo and assess whether you like those. Then number four, assess the props that you've used, including your main plate of food, as well as any other supplementary props around the food and the background. Number five, I want you to look at the composition and placement of all the items that are in your picture, including the hero food item, as well as any other props and where you've placed them in relation to the main food and the angle of the camera. And then last but not least, look at the editing. How much contrast do you have? Look at the white balance. Look at specific colors in the photo and how saturated they look. So these are just a few things that you can think about when it comes to the specifics of each photo that you're assessing and trying to pinpoint exactly what you don't like. Now, once again, this exercise is not to point out that there's actually something wrong with every single component I just mentioned. It's more about being very specific about what you don't like, and it could just be one thing. Now, from this list, I want you to actually pick one specific thing. So if your list is three or four items long, pick one thing. And if it's just one thing, focus on that. So what I want you to do is start working on that one thing that you want to start to fix, that you want to improve on. So let's say it's lighting. What is it about the lighting that you don't like? And then spend the next week or so just practicing on your lighting skills with the goal of improving this one thing. You can also check out this video that I made specifically on lighting if that's your main struggle. Now, the great thing about this technique is when you start working on one thing at a time, it makes it so much easier to put your whole focus on one thing and you'll immediately start seeing improvements much faster in that area. The problem with food photography is that it's a puzzle of a whole lot of different things. There are so many moving parts to a photo shoot and if you try and fix everything at once, it can be overwhelming. So to recap today's main points, if you're finding that you're hating your current food photos, the first thing I want you to do is ensure that you're only valuing your own opinion and not listening to everyone on the internet and their advice when it comes to food photography. 
Think about your opinion or that of a mentor. Number two is to take a step back. Take a day off, rest your mind and creativity, and come back to that photo a couple of days later to reassess the situation. And then number three is to evaluate the photo to pinpoint exactly what it is that you don't like about it, and then start working on that one thing to try and improve it. So it's now time for you to jump into the comment box and tell me what's that one thing you want to improve on when it comes to your food photography. Are you struggling with the lighting? Is it your composition skills? Perhaps it's the marketing. Perhaps it's the cold pitching. Is it your editing? Jump into the comments and tell me what that is. Now, if you'd virtually like me to help you figure out where you stand in terms of your skill levels as a food photographer, learn the four biggest mistakes both new and advanced food photographers are making, not only when it comes to creating stunning photos, but also making it into a serious business. If you also want to know my complete cold pitch process that converts new cold clients into paying customers, as well as my proven system for creating a thriving food photography business from scratch, then make sure you join my waitlist that I've linked in the description box below. This will let you know when my free masterclass is next open for you to see. This is a free one hour training where you'll walk away with so much new information for the next steps in your own food photography business. So the link for that again is in the description box below. Now, before I leave you today, I just want you to know that as your food photography improves, the goalposts will also keep moving forward. And there needs to be growth in terms of skill and mindset at every stage of your food photography journey. I always tell my students that making a successful business out of food photography is 20% skill, 30% marketing, and 50% mindset. And that's why I made a whole video on three mindset issues that you really need to master in order to be successful in the business of food photography. So you can just click on that over here. I'll be back next week with a whole new video, but in the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram where I'm there every day with new tips and tutorials. Catch you guys next week.